Hi everyone, in today's video we're gonna start designing a website in Figma. My intention here is during this video at least build the header menu and kind of set up a basic structure for a website design. So a small disclaimer, what I'm going to present in this video or maybe in this series of videos is not the only way to design a website, it's just a way that you can design a website that has worked for me in the past. This is the approach that I took for some of my clients. And of course, each project is unique. And for some projects, there might be better ways to do things. But in general, this is like the very generic basic way of designing landing page. And yeah, let's, let's just see where this takes us. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to learn something new from this. So. Uh, how do we start with designing a website? Well, first of all, we're, we're gonna have to create a, a very simple system for our headlines and maybe fonts or even colors, but we're just gonna take a very lean approach. And since we are building in this video, just the header menu, we're just gonna use one single uh, font size, which is probably going to be button or paragraph text. Um, let's just say that it's going to be 16 pixels right let's just say this is going to be 16 pixels or points and the font is going to be sf pro medium uh, let's just make this fully opaque right so this is the starting point that we uh, we kind of have and uh, what i'm going to do is create a frame so i'm going to use my frame tool and create a frame this frame is going to be of course the basis for our screen for our website uh, screen kind of preview and the width of this frame is going to be 1440 by 900 right so I think this is uh, this corresponds to a MacBook Pro screen I'm going to rename this frame to website and also since you have to organize your your website items in some kind of system to work for most screens uh, we're going to use a grid a 12 column layout right let me just write this down we're going to be using a 12 column layout and each column is going to be 74 pixels and the gutter is going to be 24 pixels right so um, this is because you want to make sure that your website actually works for even the smallest of screens, right? Not everybody has full HD, 4K, um, huge, huge desktop screens. Sometimes you have a tiny laptop and then you need to make sure the website works for most of these devices, right? So how do we, how do we create such a layout? So with this frame selected, uh, you can see that here we have the layout the grid. I'm going to click plus and then you can see this creates a 10 pixel by 10 pixel grid. This is not exactly what we are looking for, but we are going to fix that by clicking here to layout grid settings. And then uh, under this drop down menu on the top, I'm going to select columns, right? Columns. And there are going to be 12 of those columns. So I'm going to edit this field that says count. I think, well, I'm, I'm usually used to making them uh, black with very, very low opacity, so like 8%. And this, when it comes to the type, we are looking at center, right? So you can see this created 12 tiny columns in the middle of our screen. We are getting there. So as I said, this one column is going to have 74 pixels and the gutter is going to have 24 pixels, right? So you can see we have now 12 columns that are 74 in width and the spacing is 12, uh, sorry, 24, not 12. 12 is the total number of columns. And the reason why we are doing this is that when we are going to design our website, we are going to use elements that are going to span, for example, two, three, or like, um, you know, six columns or four, you know? So we are going to use this as a guide for our element width basically. But uh, that's all for eventually for future videos. In this video, we are focusing on the header menu, right? So let's think about what such a header menu actually requires. Well, you have, obviously you have menu items, right? You have menu items, you have buttons, individual sections, um, and then you have some kind of logo. You have a logo placeholder. So we are going to create a placeholder for our logo. I'm going to create a frame that's going to be 
this big. Um, it's gonna have a gray background and I'm going to rename this uh, logo placeholder. And here, let's just pretend that this is our logo. We are going to turn this into a component and then we're gonna option and drag to create an instance of our logo placeholder. Reason why we are doing this is when we use the logo multiple times on our website, when we make a change in the original component, uh, all these changes are gonna be reflected across all of these instances. So let's keep that here for now. And now for the actual header menu items. Why don't we type in menu item, menu item like this, and then I'm going to press Shift A to add auto layout around this menu item. We are going to go for around 16 in horizontal, uh, in vertical padding, and then probably 16 or 20 in horizontal padding. I'm going to rename this menu item, menu item. What I'm going to do next is create a component from this. And this component is going to have, well, in the end, I think four variants, but for now, we're just gonna create the second one, right? So we have a menu item component with two variants. Why do we have two variants? Well, because one of them is going to be default and one of them is going to be hover. And um, property one isn't really a the best description that we can use for, um, for this. So let's just rename the property one to state. So we now have a menu item component with states default and hover, right? Simple enough, I think. So here I think we could uh, select by pressing command and then clicking on the text. We could select the menu item text directly and then reduce the opacity of this to around 50. So the intention here is when you're going to have a menu item in the menu, you're just gonna have two of those or multiple of these next to each other. And then when you're going to hover over one of those, it's going to change to hover, right? Text is gonna darken essentially, uh, right? But we have to define such an interaction, right? We have to actually define that when you do this. So I'm gonna go to prototype with this first state selected and I'm going to connect that to the second state. And here under interaction details, I'm going to select while hovering, change to state hover. And this change is gonna be instant. Let's keep everything totally simple, right? So. What we have done is we have created an interactive component. This is a component and by adding an action like this, by adding this interaction while hovering, we have defined that when you hover with your mouse over this element, it's gonna turn into this variant. And when you hover back outside, it's gonna revert back. So this is now an interactive component. But um, there's gonna be also a second type of menu of the menu item, right? There's gonna be one that is more prominent. This means that we're gonna create another variant of this by selecting this one and then Alt or option and dragging, we have create another state, another variant, right? So um, because these top ones are gonna be state default and these ones are gonna be state hover, this means that this needs to be default as well. But uh, Figma is alerting us that the properties and values of this variant are conflicting. And no wonder, because we have two variants, two different variants, but we have said that both of these have the same properties. So Figma is confused. To fix this, I'm going to select the whole component, create a new property, a new variant property, right? By going to properties and clicking this plus icon. And this new component property is gonna be called, let's say type. Let's, the default value, let's keep that to regular. And then let's go over to this one. And under regular, we're gonna add new and change this to highlight it. And you can see that Figma is no longer complaining because um, this row is a default state. This row is, the, uh, is hover state. This column is the regular one. And this column is going to be the highlighted one. So each button is going to be unique. So with this highlighted type, we're gonna go to fill and add a background. This background is gonna be black and it's also going to be rounded. This is going to be rounded. Let's say eight pixels, uh, eight points. I'm going to select the menu item that's inside this variant 
and in order for this to be visible we need to make it white that makes sense you can see that uh, this is now highlighted this is not highlighted this is not hover and we're going to create additional variant for hovering under state with this new variant that i have just created by so uh, pressing option and dragging, I'm going to select hover. But we actually again need to make sure that under prototype, this is being reflected. So as you can see right now from this variant, when you hover, so while hovering, because we duplicated this one, the hover state is leading to here, but we don't want that. We want a special hover state for our new special variant. I'm going to reconnect that to this variant. So as you can see, each of these two variants has its own hover state, which means I am going to modify this hover state and maybe make the background a bit lighter. So let's say like this. And I have noticed that there is some type of interaction right here and we have to remove this, right? This is again leading to this state. We don't want this connection. We just want to make sure that when we hover over this, it's going to go here. And when we hover over this, it's going to go here. No other interactions. But at the same time, we want to have this all hidden in the menu item. And what's next? Well, I think it would be nice to actually make it easy for us to change the text of the button, right? So I am just going to select all these texts. I'm going to press command and then click shift click on all these texts and then under content i am going to create a text property and this text property is going to be called text and the value is going to be menu item when i create this and then select this instance you can see that we have a new kind of field here that we can change when i do that the text of the button is going to change no matter if we have the highlighted variant, the highlighted type, or the default regular type, right? So text is just gonna be changed here. And uh, if the state is hover or default, also doesn't matter. We just connected all these texts to this property. Reset all changes, right? Now, um, I'm also going to just play around with the logo. So let's just say I'm gonna use text and type in logo, logo like this. Um, I'm going to make this a bit larger. So let's go for like 29 maybe. Of course you can see it's being updated. Actually, it's not being updated because I'm creating the text on top of an instance. I have to move this inside the component, right? So here you can see what happens when you actually don't update the the components now when i include this logo text inside the component the instances are going to be updated right and then also let's create some kind of uh, ellipse just to have something as an icon for the logo right remember we are just doing placeholders so we don't have to make this very sophisticated and yeah this is our company logo very very nice right we have our company logo so we have menu items we have company logos now we just need to start arranging these things and actually use them on our screen to see what we have created um, so let me just copy this four times so that we have five items in total, right? We have five menu items and I'm going to select all of these, press shift A and then rename this, this new auto layout to menu items because we have multiple menu items in our auto layout. And then I'm gonna select the first one and I'm gonna type in here, first page. Then here's gonna say second page. And to be less generic, let's say customers. And this one, this one is going to say um, about us. And then the last one is gonna say reach out to us. And this last one is gonna be the most prominent. So we're gonna change the type to highlight it. So as you can see, we have these menu items, these beautiful buttons that we can use in our header menu. I am going to add some spacing probably around 12, just to have some more space between these um, items, right? Now, what I'm going to do is use an instance of the logo, right? I'm going to move that over here. And then I'm going to select the menu items, auto layout and the logo placeholder and press shift A again. Uh, then I'm going to make sure that we have left center alignment, right? So that it's all in one line, because if we do this, you can see it's aligned to the bottom, here is to the top, so we want the middle. Additionally, 
under spacing I'm gonna add zero right this is too narrow but don't worry we're gonna fix that and then under fixed width under uh, horizontal resizing I'm going to select fixed width and this fixed width is going to be 1152 right and as you can see we have a container for our logo and menu items but there is this huge space right here that we need to fix how do we do that well we select this container and then go to auto layout and under advanced auto layout settings advanced layout settings we're going to select spacing mode is going to be space between right this pushes this item all the way to the side and also it automatically calculates for us what's the spacing between these uh, two elements between this and this so what has happened here is that we have basically told Figma, hey, this element is going to be 1152 pixels wide, and then you're going to have these two elements, but they are going to be spaced apart, right? They're going to, going to be pushed to the edges, which means you have to calculate um, you have to calculate the space between. And I am going to rename this new frame to header menu container, or let's say rather header navigation container. And then what I'm going to do is again, press shift A to add another auto layout around this, remove the paddings, horizontal and vertical. And then this, this thing is gonna be also fixed width, but in this case, it's gonna be 1400. And let's set the alignment to top center or maybe center, just dead center. And this is going to be called header, right? Because this is a header. And as you can see, if I now add a background, now watch what happens when I resize this. If I have a larger screen, if I'm designing for a larger screen, this header menu is still going to be respecting this 12 column layout. Because when I make this larger, you can see the 12 column layout maintains its width. And we wanna make sure that all the items that are there are going to respect that, which is why we have constructed the header in this way. So let's set that back to 1400 and let's turn this into a component. And then under assets, I am going to look for the header and drop that onto our website frame right here. I'm going to align that to the top and center. And as you can see, we need to make this a bit wider. So let's say 1440, 1440 and center again. And now uh, you can see that when I change, for example, the first button text, here it says first page. So when I rename this to features, you can see it's being updated here as well, which is extremely useful when we are going to have multiple pages with multiple instances of the header of the header navigation. So that's why I am creating everything with components to be able to make changes easily. I am going to also change the background of this website to light gray. And let's just create, uh, let's just make this a bit scrollable. So let me make this taller and then uh, I'm going to create some elements just so that you can kind of um, see how the scrolling feature works. This is just gonna be 2%, gonna be all the way at the bottom. It's just gonna be this and this right here. And uh, to make this scrollable, first of all, we are going to select this website frame and then go to prototype and under overflow scrolling, we are going to set vertical scrolling, which means that now when we launch the prototype, let's do this, we are going to be able to scroll through our page. As you can see with these um, ellipses being, with these ellipses moving across the screen. But the navigation is also moving and we want to prevent that, which means I am going to select this and under design, I am going to check fixed position when scrolling. And now this happens, right? This happens, which is nice because this actually means we have a header navigation that follows us over the entire course of the page. And also if we now hover over these individual, let me hide, uh, let me hide this. When I now hover over individual buttons, you can see they react to our hovering because we have defined the hover states, the hover interactions right here, right? So this is the behavior that we get. And congratulations, you have created a header menu navigation that with a fixed position when scrolling and with 
menu items that react to your hovering. In the upcoming videos, we are going to work on this uh, design and expand that. And we are going to try and build an entire fictional website with a working navigation and then maybe even with a mobile version. So definitely stay tuned if you want to learn how to design websites in Figma, or at least how I design websites in Figma. As I said, this is not the only approach to do things. I'm just teaching you what I know. And I hope you have learned something new. Leave a like if this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.